Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to God is Speaking. Today, I want to go to 1 Corinthians. We're looking in chapter 10. And in chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, um, it starts off as telling us in the first um, 9, 10 verses of scripture, it's telling us some of the things that the children of Israel did in the wilderness. And it's talking about the mistakes that, that they made. And it talks about, you know, telling us not to be idolaters as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, rose up to play, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. Those are verses seven and eight, but it goes on and it's talking about things that they did in the wilderness. And it goes down when we get to, um, Verse 11, it says, now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he fall. It's saying these things happened to them. There were consequences for their errors, and it was, it was done and it happened uh, unto them for example, so that we don't make the same mistakes. You know how maybe you try to teach your children or your nieces or nephews or some people you come in contact with that are, you know, uh, going through things you've already been through, th things that you've already done, and you try to help them. And you try to show them, listen, I did that and I made a mistake. Don't do what I did. Don't don't fall into the same trap I fell into. And it, and so it's basically saying, look, you see these things that they did. You see what happened as a, as a result of their bad decision, their error in thinking, their error in their ways. Don't do the same thing be careful it says and, and if you think that you're standing take heed lest you fall don't think that you can't fall don't think that you can't make mistakes sometimes people think well that won't happen to me but the thing that we need to remember when you read this in the NLT verse 11 says these things happen to them as examples for us they were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. But then this is the verse that I want us to look at also is in verse 13. And the King James says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, make a way, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. This verse of scripture here uh, in the NLT says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you're tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Now, I want to look at this verse of scripture because oftentimes this is taught in when people are going through trials and tribulations and people tell them, well, God won't give you more than you can bear. But this verse of scripture is not even talking about that. If you look around this verse of scripture, you see that it starts off in this chapter talking about mistakes and errors that the children of Israel made in the wilderness the consequences of it and don't you do the same thing and when you get to this verse of scripture it's saying when you face these temptations there is no different than what other people experience God is faithful he won't allow the temptation to be more than you can stand when you're tempted he gives you a way out so you can endure it and then the next verse says so my dear friends flee from worship idols this has nothing to do with if God is going to give you more than you can bear because you're in trouble this has to do with the fact that we try to act like we can't help it all the time. Well, you know, it, temptation overtook us. The devil made us do it. This verse of scripture is telling us there's no temptation that we have that others haven't had. It's saying God is faithful when you're tempted, when you want to cuss somebody out, when you want to fornicate and commit adultery, when you want to lie, cheat, and steal, when you want to worship false idols, when you want to put something or somebody ahead of God. Listen, it's a temptation, and we're always going to have temptations because we're in the flesh. But it says God is faithful. He won't allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he gives you a way out. He shows you a way out so you can endure it. So that means that you're going to be tempted just like everyone else. But you don't have to fall into temptation because God gives you a way of escape so you can bear it. You don't have to uh, commit idolatry. You don't have to fornicate and commit adultery. You don't have to, you know, um, 
do some of the things the children of Israel did or things that we used to do before we got saved. We don't have to do those things. We don't have to fall into lust and desires and addictions and habits. We don't have to do that anymore because we have been saved. We have a way out. Jesus is our way out. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So I'm telling us today as we're reading these verses of scripture to get this and get this verse correctly because it sounds good um, for us to use this verse of scripture when we're going through trouble that God won't give me more than I can bear. But then when a temptation come, we act like we can't help it. Well, the verse is for the temptation. This verse of scripture is letting us know today that if we feel tempted, somebody is getting on our nerves, somebody's rubbing us the wrong way, there's something we want to do, someplace we're supposed to go that we know we shouldn't go there. You want to smoke that joint, you want to drink that drink, you want to have that drug, you want to, you know, uh, get in this unequally yoked relationship, you want to continue down that uh, road of destruction. Look, you're tempted to do it. But this verse of scripture says, oh, other people have been tempted to do the same thing. But God will give you a way of escape. You don't have to do that. So we need to take the verse of scripture for what it's worth and what it means and apply it to our life. And the other thing about this verse of scripture, now that's the message for today. But I just want to throw this in because people do say that God doesn't give us more than we can bear. Um the thing that we need to understand with that is that there are people that are going through tests, trials, and trouble. They're depressed about it. They're down. They're feeling broken, helpless, and hopeless. And then just to come along and tell them, God won't give you more than you can bear. If they don't have that right relationship with God, if they're not uh, rooted in the word, it makes a person feel like, well, okay, something's wrong with me because I feel like this is too much for me to bear. I feel overwhelmed. I feel depressed. I want to give up. I want to quit. But now you just told them that God won't give them more than they can bear so they think something is wrong with them let me tell you something God gives us more than we can bear. We can't do anything on our own. We can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. God tells us in Isaiah 41, he will help us. He will strengthen us and he'll hold us up with his righteous right hand. Um, Psalm 46 and 1 says God is a very present help in the time of trouble. God gives us more than we can bear. But he doesn't give us more than he can bear. We need to understand that we're dependent on him. And so we need to stop using scripture out of context because that makes a person think that doesn't have a right relationship, a strong relationship, or is not rooted in the word, that they should pick themselves up and get it together on their own. When in actuality, they need to realize, yes, we all go through things that we can't handle on our own, but go to God because he's a very present help in the time of trouble that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. That if God be for you, who can be against you? That he will help you, that he will strengthen you and hold you up with his righteous right hand. That he never leaves you nor forsakes you, but he's always there. That he is faithful. And so you begin to direct people to God. You begin to remind them they can do all things through Christ which strengthens them. So yes, God gives us more than we can bear because we can't even fight the enemy on our own. We need him. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need to be in right relationship with God in order for us to endure. Then can we endure? Of course we can because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. And what's impossible for us is possible for God. So let's read the scriptures in context so we can apply them properly so we can walk in victory. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would bless those, Lord God, that have heard this word today. Help us to apply it to our life. Help us to walk in it boldly. Help us to be all that you purpose us to be. Help us to realize, Lord God, that we don't have to fall into temptation. Jesus told us to watch and pray lest we fall into temptation. Help us to watch. Help us to pray. Help us to be committed, to be submitted. Help us to surrender to you and to resist the devil and he'll flee. God, we love and honor and praise you today. We thank you, Lord God, for the measure of faith that you've given us. We give you all the glory and all the praise for you are worthy. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we say hallelujah and amen. God bless you. Don't forget, submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. We don't have to fall into temptation. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want notifications when I upload videos. For those that are already subscribers, I appreciate you. God bless you. And 
Don't forget our wild wow movement watchmen on the wall that we meet Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we pray. We intercede. We stand in the gap one for another, for this nation, for the leadership, for this world, for the unsaved, the addicted, abused, incarcerated, for those that are going through. We stand in the gap for the church, for believers, for one another. And so please join us on Facebook Live. My page is Tony Brooke Brown or on Instagram Live. My page is Pastor Tony Brown. I pray that you have a blessed day in the Lord. Please share this message with 5, 10, 15 people that may benefit from it. But also, please share the gospel with somebody who's unsaved. Be a vessel and an instrument God works through today for the uplifting of his kingdom. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.